Hello there and welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made the hooded scarf shawl sort of thing that I wore in the cyberpunk lookbook last month on the channel and I devised a new way of doing my hood pattern for this and I really needed to go, go over hoods and cover drafting a hood from scratch anyway here on the channel because I've kind of skirted around making hoods before even when I did this hooded house coat I don't think I fully explained how I drafted the hood pattern so I'll draft the hood from scratch with you today I have changed up how I do these a little bit this one is a two piece so it's just one for each side and now I have added a center ribbon down the center of my hoods which makes it quite a bit flatter on the top which I really like and then for the like scarfy drapey bits they are just triangles basically so you don't need a basic bodice block um, to make those, I'll be starting with mine just as a base, but you can really just draft those just with rulers and straight lines. So you don't really need a bodice block to make any of this today. Let's go ahead and jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. And we begin by drafting the hood pattern. And I'm going to be showing you how to make this pattern exactly, um, like in a one size fits all kind of way. Will this fit everybody? Probably not. Will this fit onto every garment? Probably not. But I have fiddled with it quite a lot over the years and try to get the angle along the shoulder and neckline to my liking. And so this is like my favorite hood as of right now. I recommend maybe giving it a try, seeing if it works for you and then fiddling with it in addition yourself because, um, you know, everyone wants a different depth or size of hood in some ways, but this is just the one that I like. And of course, mine is based off of originally um, the instructions for the loose hood or the large hood here in the Helen Joseph Armstrong book. So I will go ahead and post these um, scans onto my pictures as well and I can link to those in the description below and I'll actually do it this time because I think I said I would do it last time and I didn't so that's a mistake but to make my preferred loose two-piece hood which is what we're going to start with today I'm going to start with a piece of paper shocking and a squared off like a, a squared off line so a uh, axis to begin with here I'm going to label this point where the two lines meet as point A I'm going to measure up 10 inches from that and mark that as point B so that's 10 inches between A and B here then I'm going to come up another three inches from there. So one, two, three, and that is going to be point C. So, um, you know, 13 inches technically. Now from point C out, I'm going to again mark 10 inches. That's 90 degree angle, 10 inches out from there. And then again, I will actually mark out another three inches eventually. I'm going to mark half inch down from D, and that's going to be called D2, because why not? And out from there, again, another three inches. So again, right now we just have 13 inches up and 13 inches out. And I'm going to mark one inch down from E, and mark that F. Hopefully everyone's following along. Pause if you need to. Down here along this bottom axis, I'm going to come out three inches and then I'm going to come up a quarter of an inch and label that G. There you go. Three inches. Yes, three. We got it. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of lines down here. Seven and a half inches out from A. I'm going to mark that H and then I'll come out 10 inches and mark that I. All these little points are going to help us create the curve we need. I'm going to square down from D to I. So right now we just have a 13 inch tall rectangle and that is 10 inches wide. I'm going to mark a half inch in from A and then three inches up. We'll label that J and K. Why not? Um, so again, pause if you need to. From G here, I'm going to come out three inches and then I will go two inches down and then I'm going to come out an inch from that. There we go. And one inch down. Um, so this is five inches out from A and six inches out from A just all these marks. And then down from H, I'm going to go four inches. And that's because all of this is going to be connected by a curve. So I'm going to curve. It's, you know, connect the dots, you know, draw by numbers, come up a half inch along this line, and then connect into the H line. So hopefully you can see how that curve was created using those marks. Again, um, replay me in slow-mo if needed. I'll just trace this in. This little notch here is going to become a dart eventually. I am going to just curve the end of the H line here up to I, and then I'm going to come up three inches from C and curve between B and that new mark, like so, along the top of the hood. And then over here, I have this hood that kind of extends down to F. So I'm gonna draw through D2 to F and connect that in. So hopefully you can see exactly the curves, the shape I'm drawing. Just curve the front of the hood here, the back of the hood, like so. So again, I know this is an annoying one because uh, it is very, you know, paint by numbers, but if you want my exact hood pattern, here it is, you know? Now, four inches out along this bottom axis line, I'm going to just mark that and then measure up two inches from there. And that's going to be the dart point for connecting my dart legs down to this little notch. So down to this point at the end of that six inch mark and then a half inch over. And this creates, this is that little notch right there is for this dart. You can just smooth this whole area off if you want to and ignore the dart. Um, the dart is part of the Helen Joseph Armstrong hood pattern. And so I've just left mine in 
and just sew it. It's like a tiny little dart. I'm not sure how much a huge difference it makes, but you know, it's there. And this is the basic loose hood. This is towards the front. Um, you know, you need two of these left and right. Um, here's my basic hood pattern that I fiddled with for forever to get the angle along the shoulder that I liked. And this is what I like. So um, now to make it into this three piece hood, obviously you can see I had to make it smaller because it has this band that goes across the back. So I'll show you how much I took off to create that. So from the front of the hood here, I'm going to come down one inch. From the back, I'm going to come out one inch, really one and a half, but we'll get to that later. And then from the you know back corner of the hood, I'm going to come in three inches like so. And I'll just smooth all along this, make this a nice curve. You can use French curve rulers and stuff like that if you're not comfortable drawing curves like I am. And then from this front, actually, I'm going to take half an inch off a little wedge off here just to make this a little bit shorter, just because that's what I did for the white hood. And I'm going to come in another half inch back here. Uh, like I said, probably one and a half across the back. Um, you can, again, like this was just, how did I decide all these things? How do I get one inch? How do I get three inches? It's all just because I was playing it around. And then when I measured what I draped, that's what it was. Um, you know, a lot of times when I am doing things like this, it's, uh, I'm trying to show you how to do it after I've played around and messed around with it and done a rather, a rather messy and creative process. So um, this is, you know, sometimes these numbers come out of nowhere. Yeah, I know. Um, but the, here I'm going to measure the outside edge of this hood, which is 19 inches. I'm going to draw a rectangle that's 19 inches long and three inches wide, because that's how wide I'm going to make the center band ribbon for most of this. Um, so I just have a three inch wide buddy. The one that I'm measuring here and playing with from the actual pattern I've been working with lately, um, it's a little bit too wide. So I'm going to correct that in this one, one we're making today. But yes, this is three inches wide for our band here. This is going to be the neck down here in the back. I'm going to come up that original 10 inches that we used to make our hood as well. And that's going to be kind of the middle of the back of my hood. And I'm going to come out an additional half inch on either side from that level. Um, so this is going to be four inches wide in the center up here. It's not exactly the center of 19 inches, obviously. It's a little bit past, but you get the idea. And I'm going to connect that down to our original rectangle. Finish drawing off my 19 inch long strip here, like so. And again, I'm going to connect this to the four inch mark width. Um, and you can, you know, this is a very straight angular lines right now, and you can curve them out a little bit more if you want to um, make it a little bit more curvilinear if you'd like. But functionally, it's just like a triangle that widens a little bit in the middle. You know, you don't have to be actually that precise about it. It's just a big floopy hood, you know, and this is the front slash like face area of the hood, whereas the back is the neck and that will fit along the back of the hood here. Let me just walk that seam for you. And you can see I don't have seam allowance on this. I'm just drafting it with seam allowance included basically for all of this. Um, the hood is a little different than, you know, it doesn't have to like fit my body perfectly the way that regular patterns do. But this is my basic loose hood now transformed into a three piece hood pattern. We have a left and a right and a center band on this. You need to cut two of the hood pattern and one of the band pattern in general. And then I can show you how I threw this hood onto a couple of triangles to make this drapey scarf shawl thing. So I'm just starting with my basic block back pattern. Um, you, again, you could just, you know, draw a line and call it a shoulder. Um, I have my block pattern here just to have the back neckline kind of, but in the end I end up widening it a little bit anyway. Draw a gentle curve for your back neckline. Measure your neck and take half that measurement, you know. Um, if you don't have a bodice block like I do, I'm going to come all the way down the center back here. I am going to have a center back seam on this. In fact, I think this might be a little bit short, so let's tape some extra paper on here. Maybe, kind of, sorta. I'm going to make this 30 inches long along the center back. And then I came out about nine inches along the shoulder additionally. And you'll see when I go up there again. Yeah, move along, kid. Yeah, okay. Draw my triangle. There we go, up here. Up here, I came out about nine inches from the tip of the shoulder of my pattern, which means that this will hang down from my shoulder tip, almost like, like a sleeve or like a cape about nine inches. And then I'm coming down halfway th down the center back and I'm going to leave the tips of this open. So you'll see that. But this is hooded shawl back. Again, it's just a big triangle with curved edges over the shoulder. You know, you can draw a big triangle. You can make it as long or as wide or as narrow as you want. It's just a triangle that's at the angle of my shoulder. But, you know, it doesn't have to be. If you made this a right angle triangle like, perfectly, it would be fine. But of course I need to do the same sort of thing for the front here. So I'm going to again start with my block pattern just because I have it it helps like provide me a base for knowing like instead of having to measure my body measure my shoulder I just have it here on my bodice block so I might as well use it 
Again, I'm going to extend that shoulder line. I'm going to make it the same length as I made the back here. You can see I curved that over the shoulder area a little bit as opposed to keeping it a point. You could make it pointy if you wanted to. I extended that neckline a little bit because I want to go ahead and make this into a straight line out here. I'm thinking, should I just have this? Yeah, let's just have this be a straight line. So I'm going to angle this down like so, so that it's a straight line across the center front, eventually crosses the center front, as you can see. But again, we're just drawing a big triangle that's based off of my measurements to begin with. But this would fit any person, uh, really, because uh, it's not, you know, fitted in any way. It's just big triangles that wrap around. This, this is kind of determining the size of the scarf, but you could make it wider. You could make it more circular. You could have the, if you come out along the shoulder very long, then it's basically a cape. Uh, so, you know, the wider you make it past the shoulder, the more of a cape this becomes. Sort of like a cape shawl scarf thing. Not very official. But you can see I don't even have a neckline on the front of this, but it will still come together with our hood. Our hood fits into this no problem. It's a pretty versatile hood. I've used it on a couple of garments now and just stuck it in between the neckline and it hasn't caused me any problems yet. Although, you know, technically you're supposed to draft hoods based on the neckline of the garment, but I haven't found it needs to be that particular actually. But I'll cut this out of my white cotton sateen and then also out of neon yellow taffeta, as you can see here. I'm sewing the center back seam here on the 99K. I'm just going to backstop halfway down that seam so I can leave the tails center back of this open. I'll do the same for the white one here. Just sew the center backs first, and then I will sew the shoulder seams um, of the backs to the fronts, basically. I'm using neon yellow Guterman thread over here. I'm just going to sew my tiny darts that are a part of the, the hood pattern that you saw me draw in there. Again, I suppose that this just helps angle the hood and fit it down to the neck a little bit more. I think you can eliminate them. It, it won't be a bad deal. But I'll press open those center back seams, like so, including the open area. And then I can again, yeah, line, well, there's an earthquake happening apparently <laughs> as I hit the camera, but I can line up my fronts along this shoulder seam, this cape-like shoulder seam, like so. And then I will stitch those with half inch seam allowance as well for both the white and the neon. I really don't recommend a very thick or stiff fabric for this, um, unless you're going for a very specific look. Um, even this sateen is quite stiff for doing this. Uh, and of course, taffeta is very crispy, but uh, thinner and floopier is going to give you a floopier looking scarf and crispier is going to look stiffer. So just keep that in mind. I wouldn't, you know, make one of these out of denim or like cotton twill, um, but a rayon twill. Yes. Uh, it just depends on the texture you're after, uh, or like the drape you're after in the end. But I will say that sateen and taffeta works perfectly fine. Even though those are both a little bit on the crispier side, I just wouldn't go crispier than this. And I'm just pinning the center ribbon onto the edge of my hood, just like I walked that pattern earlier. And I can stitch that over on the machine and these shoulder seams as well. And the neon does do some strange things to my camera. I have blue light on here. I'm not actually, you know, my skin isn't that purple normally without the blue lighting. But this fabric is glowing a little bit in the <laughs> blue LED. And I can just sew along the curve of that hood, trying not to get any puckers, trying to make sure everything stays smooth. You can uh, pre-clip this seam if you need to, uh, if it's too curvy as well. I'm pulling my larger pins out as I go here. I like to sew over my fine pins, but try not to sew over these larger ones, personally. And I will sew the other side of the hood as well. And yes, I will have to clip that curve eventually, but I'll wait until I put the lining and the outside fabric together before I clip that, just because this taffeta likes to fray and I would like to avoid that as much as possible. And here I'm using my fine pins this time so I can sew over them. Nice. So yes, now I have my white sateen hood finished all put together and those seams along the ribbon, the center ribbon um, of that top stitch because I felt like it and it's me. And then I will just match up the hood seams here at the face front side of these things, lining this up right sides together. I will sew the entire like outer face framing edge of this, um, not the neckline. That way I can use the neckline as a way to turn this right side out after I sew them together. So basically just bag lining the hood here. I'll bag line the rest of the scarf cape thing in a minute as well. But we're gonna finish the hood first and then I will set it into along the neckline and sandwich it between the lining and the outside fabric for the scarf bit, poncho-y thing. What are we going to call this? Scarf poncho cape hood thing. <clears throat> Again, this has some curves, so I'll go ahead and put some clips in here around the curved area. That way I can get this to lay smooth. Turn this right side out. After I lint roll the inside because 
the neon is kind of transparent and the white obviously shows any black lint. So I didn't want to get this closed up in there with lint inside. So try to be careful a little bit about that. But I'll just press my edge uh, like nice and smooth and roll that together between my fingers along my tailor's ham and give that a press just to make sure that everything's nice and smooth. You could do understitching along this, um, but I think I top stitched this, so I didn't bother doing understitching for that reason. Whenever I'm doing top stitching instead, I don't often understitch because it's like, eh, I'll, the top stitching will hold in place, it's fine. But yes, my hood is now lined and I can go ahead and attach it to the rest of my little KPK cape here. So I have the white outside fabric and I'm just pinning this right sides together along the neckline of the hood, like so. And this is just gonna get sandwiched in between the layers. And when it gets turned right side out after bag lining the rest here, it will be ready to go and all seamless and nice, I promise. So just pin that, you know, center back of the hood to the center back of the garment. And then I can go ahead and layer on the lining on top of that, move all those pins again, and sandwich that hood in between the layers here as I put right sides together of the lining and the outside fabric. And sew it all together, all along the edges, all these long, long edges, <laughs> so that I can bag line the rest of this scarf here, like so. If you were doing this single layer or something like that, you could also use bias binding on the edges, or just hem them as you like. Um, it's really nice, clean finish to do it this way, where you bag line the whole thing. So I do think it's nice. Plus, then it's, re it's fully reversible after doing this. So I can have neon with white on the inside, or white on the outside, and neon on the inside, so wear it either way in life depending on how high visibility I need to be you know might be good to throw it on when I'm walking down to the mailbox if it's a foggy day although it's not often foggy here in Colorado which is a bummer because I quite like fog but we're completely you know inland and too far away from the foothills and such to actually get fog often although it is only 24 degrees and cloudy today so rather on the chilly side but I'm just going to stitch all around the edges of this buddy again trying to remove my heavy pins instead of stitch over them. When I get to a corner, I just pick the presser foot up, leaving the needle down in the fabric, move the project wherever I need it to be, put the presser foot back down and keep stitching. Just moving around my corners. I will need to clip those corners just like I clip curves before I turn this right side out. But just going along, make sure you have a full bobbin before you start doing something like this, where it's like a giant thing here. Otherwise you will be sad. And it's good to avoid being sad and running out of bobbin thread when you really don't want to. Not that it's ever good to run out of bobbin thread when you're not expecting it. It's always a bummer. Although they uh, they call it winning thread chicken, I believe. When you get to the end of the seam and you run out of bobbin thread at the exact correct moment. Nice. And yes, my machine is cruising around here and vibrating <laughs> uh, itself into a little bit of a dance over on this table. And I actually recently got a nice like sticky backed felt mouse pad to put under the machine. So now it doesn't move anymore. And so that will be nice for me editing and you watching. But yes, I'm going to clip my curves. I'm going to clip my corners. You know, careful not to cut through the stitching line, but to cut close. That way everything will lay smooth, especially up here next to the neckline where there's that curve of the back neckline. And then I will turn everything right side out. And again, give everything a nice crispy press. And then because I'm using top stitching as an accent on this in general, not that you can really tell because neon yellow thread on white, it's not very noticeable unless the black light is on it really. And even then, um, but I'm going to press it all the edges smooth and then top stitch those to hold them down and nice. And like I said, the center back of this is still open. So you can see that here. Um, this is like how I turned it right side out. I said it's back, it's open back here. You'd have to like leave a space if this was not open. And the, there's a black and neon version that you'll see at the end of this video that I made recently that I did not have the split of the center back, although I do kind of prefer it. So I wish I had done it, but whatever. I'm trying to save a tiny bit of time, silly me. But I'm just gonna pin that open area of this giant pillowcase, if you know what I mean, closed. And then you could slip stitch this and it would be invisible, but I'm gonna top stitch the whole thing anyway. So I might as well just top stitch that area closed anyhow. And no one will be the wiser, so works just fine. Then I won't have to do any hand finishing on this, which is rare for me these days. I do a lot of hand finishing. So I'll just top stitch a quarter inch away from the edge all along this whole thing. That'll hold this nice crispy press that I put in here. 
and this little hooded scarf, poncho, weirdness cape will be all finished and ready to wear. And here is my finished white sateen and neon taffeta hood that you saw in the cyberpunk lookbook snaps recently here on my channel. I also recently threw together a black and neon version of this. This is a sort of waxed or mercenized cotton on the outside, so it almost looks like a faux leather, but it's very thin like a cotton poplin otherwise, and then lined again with this neon taffeta that I so like from moodfabrics.com. I did make the front drapes on this a little bit longer for this, just extended those triangles another six inches or so. And then also with the longer front tails, I made this all black version of this. This is a double cotton gauze, like crinkled gauze, again from moodfabrics.com. I can link this fabric below. It's a really lovely texture. It's pretty easy to work with, even though this stuff is crinkled and uh, kind of spongy, but it's very fun to have this different texture going on and it lends a much more like fantasy, I think, element to this or dystopian as opposed to directly like sci-fi. And I did just do this one in a single layer because the fabric is already double layered. Um, I did this, the drape all in a single layer and then I just only lined the hood with a matching black cotton voile, which I also used to bind the front edge as well. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this rather simple project came together today and will enjoy using the hood pattern that I know I will be adding on to more things in the future, especially anytime I need a hood, I can reach for this one now that I feel so much more confident in this hood pattern that I have going on. But thank you as always for watching today and I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.